The grace of the Father, the peace of the Son, and the fellowship of their Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, we gather our grateful hearts around this table of salvation. We remember that Christ died for our sins, and therefore we are saved. Lord Jesus, come and save us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, come and save us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, come and save us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. The high priest Hilkiah informed the scribe Shaphan, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, who read it. Then the scribe Shaphan went to the king and reported, Your servants have smelted down the metals available in the temple and have consigned them to the master workmen in the temple of the Lord. The scribe Shaphan also informed the king that the priest Hilkiah had given him a book and then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the contents of the book of the law, he tore his garments and issued this command to Hilkiah the priest. Ahikam, son of Shapham, Akor, son of Micaiah, the scribe Shapham, and the king's servant, Isaiah, go, consult the Lord for me, for the people, for all Judah, about the stipulations of this book that has been found. For the anger of the Lord has been set furiously ablaze against us because our fathers did not obey the stipulations of this book nor fulfill our written obligations. The king then had all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem summoned together before him. The king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, priests, prophets, and all the people, small and great. He had the entire contents of the book of the covenant that had been found in the temple of the Lord read out to them. Standing by the column, the king made a covenant before the Lord that they would follow him and observe his ordinances, statutes, and decrees with their whole hearts and souls, thus reviving the terms of the covenant which were written in this book, and all the people stood as participants in the covenant. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Give me discernment, that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Incline my heart to your decrees and not to gain. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Turn away my eyes from seeing what is vain. By your way, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your justice, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord, who
whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruits you will know them. The Gospel of the Lord. When we hear Jesus talking about the good trees with the good fruit and the bad trees with the bad fruit, I think sometimes we automatically leap to the conclusion that he's talking about good people and bad people. But I don't really think that we have to interpret it that way. I prefer to think of it uh, as, uh, as something else because I, I think that, that uh, people are sort of a mix of good and evil all the time and, and there's always good in, in every human on the planet, I believe that strongly. But, but uh, I like to think of these good trees and bad trees as all of my own pursuits inside of myself, my own thoughts, my own endeavors, my, the things that I'm preoccupied with, the, my tasks for the day, my goals, all of these, you could say, all of these different pursuits of mine, these different activities, they're a forest of trees. And some of them are good trees and they're bearing good fruits. I'm pursuing something, some project or something, and it's bearing good fruit. But there's a few bad trees, too, that are bearing bad fruit. And, and so then the Lord, if that's true, then the Lord is exhorting us to, to sort of take a little time out of our day and reflect on all of the, the forest of our pursuits, the, the forest of, of our goals and activities. And, and which of those things are bearing good fruit? and which are bearing bad fruit, and might we uproot the ones that are, are bearing bad fruit. Sometimes there's a, a tree, a, a pursuit, some activity, some project I'm working on that's not bearing good fruit, so I put more energy and more effort in it. And sometimes that's okay, but other times I'm actually taking away from the, the pursuits that are already bearing fruit, and, and I'm sapping the energy, if you will, uh, for these bad trees that I could perhaps just un uprooting Go to the trees that bear good fruit. If that's true, then what do we make of the first part about the wolf in sheep's clothing? There's a wonderful fable about a small country town, very poor, small country town, farming town, and they had one little church and, and that had a bell tower but no bell. And the devil came in disguise of, in the disguise of, uh, of a wealthy philanthropist, and he said, I'm going to buy a bell for that bell tower. And he bought a bell for the bell tower, and it went in the bell tower, and then the devil left. Now, why would he buy a bell for the bell tower? Well, it seems that in this little town, everybody was so poor, they had no watches or clocks, so that they all came on Sunday morning very early and just waited around for the mass to start. And in their waiting around, they all got to socialize with each other, and they found out who had died in the community and who was ill and, and whose tractor had broken down. And, all during the week they were able to go and help these people from what they learned as they were just sitting around waiting for mass. But now that they had a bell in the bell tower, the priest rang the bell and they came straight to mass. They never spent any community time with one another again. That's the parable, that's the fable, and the purpose of the fable is the same, same point of Jesus' message here, that sometimes something that looks to be in sheep's clothing, something that looks really good, actually is counter to our goals, counter to what we're looking for. In Ignatian spirituality, we call this false consolation. It's something that looks good and beautiful, that we think we're pursuing this wonderful thing, this wonderful project, this wonderful endeavor, and it looks good, but in reality, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's, it's actually doing the counter of what we want it to do. 
And, and if, we, if we pause a bit and reflect on our lives and reflect on our endeavors, perhaps we'll find those trees that bear the poor fruit and, and uproot them so that we can put more nourishment on the ones that bear good fruit. Let us stand and bring our prayers before the Lord. Let us pray that we might do the spiritual work of discernment, that we may discern the good trees and the, and the bad trees in our lives and, and uproot the bad trees. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for today's intention for the souls in purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray uh, for peace on earth, especially peace in the Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for uh, our new, newly ordained Jesuit priest, the four who were ordained a few weeks ago, and especially for Father Ruiz, who will say Mass here in this chapel tomorrow at noon. For, the, for him we, and for them we pray to the Lord. Lord for whom else or for what else shall we pray? For the recently departed soul of Elizabeth Murray and for her husband, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and, and, and suffering, and that the Holy Spirit will come upon our land, and the Spirit of God will drive the place where we will worship and we will anoint you unto God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn and, and for a speaking of abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O God, who in... Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its actions we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all that you do in this world through Jesus Christ our Lord. For, through the human, for though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts and prepare us for reconciliation. Even more by your Spirit you move human hearts, so that enemies might speak to one another, adversaries join hands, and we all seek to meet one another in peace. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, Discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name, 
He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners. He is the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation which Christ has brought us, we ask you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you, accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, and all of the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, with St. John Fisher, with St. Thomas More and all the saints, and with our own brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father in the words of the Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, so that bound to you in lasting love, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. I was supposed to announce tomorrow.